Hi everybody, my name is Rob Biaggi. Welcome, or welcome back, to Actual Truckers. On this channel, I talk to strangers. I interview truck drivers I've never met up until that moment, but somehow we always end up friends. We talk about trucking, our families, politics, religion, music, whatever. It's always interesting to me, and it's often entertaining. This is episode five of Actual Truckers, brought to you by AT Transportation. If the company you drive for is having a hard time getting you miles or getting you paid, or even remembering your name, and that frustrates you as a professional driver, give AT Transportation a call and see what they can offer you. And when you do, be sure to let them know that you heard about AT on AT. We're glad that you are here today. Let's go see who's out there. Everybody, welcome back. This is Caleb. Caleb, thanks for taking time to talk to us today. You're welcome. Appreciate it. <laughs> U.S. Army veteran. Uh, tell us, how has truck driving been as a career for you? Oh, it's been wonderful. Getting paid to travel. There you go. Now, what do you advise motorists to do if they come up next to a semi? What should they do? Speed up. Just get by them, right? Just, just go. This is Mark. Hello. Yeah, good to thanks meet you. Thanks for sharing some of your story with us today. What's the most frightened you've ever been behind the wheel? Well, frightened, it's, it's funny you say that. <laughs> we just had a big storm come through less than a week ago. And, uh, you know, usually I'm never scared of anything, but I couldn't, I couldn't even see the front of my hood. I was coming from Lexington up here to Louisville, Kentucky, and then I was coming down this hill, and I knew it was, you know, a certain point, it's a bridge, and I mean, it's ice. So I, I broke it down all the way down to five. You know, I'm just creeping, because I'm like, I'm not going over this bridge. But that's, that's probably the most frightening I mean, That's about a week ago. Okay, so now who you got back home that loves you and is waiting for you? You got a wife, kids, what do you got? Got a wife and three kids. Wow, how old are the kids? 12, nine, and five. Okay, yeah, right. You were telling me the story of the 12 year old. Tell us all about what's special about your relationship. I adopted my oldest daughter, because wow. like, like I said, he was abusive. He had never been in her life ever since she was born. What a thing for her to be able to see you loving your wife and giving her a healthy example of what it's like. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. You have adult children. What do you hope your kids have learned by watching you all these years? Well, I, I just hope that, you know, they just realize that hard work pays off and dedication. That's a great message. I, I don't know uh, how many people are teaching and preaching that anymore. I think a lot of things we see are, are kind of shortcuts and right. trying to find the easy way out. Right. But you're a little more old school. Yeah, because, well, don't, don't get it wrong now. I, 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 <laughs> I, don't, I don't been to college, as my mother would call it. You know, I, I was in the streets, and I just thank God that he changed me, and I, I can help pass on more positivity because we have enough people passing on negativity. So how did you get into trucking? You said you came out of the Army. Yes. Which is incredible. You guys have guts, man. We love you. Thank you for doing that. Um, Thank you. How'd you get into driving after that? My dad was a truck driver when he was alive. Is that right? He drove till I was about uh, six, right before I turned seven. Okay. And he passed away from cancer on uh, Father's oh, Day. Oh, man. I'm sorry. Or maybe right before Father's right Day. Right on. Oh, God. It was either right before or right on. Life is tough, man, huh? Yeah. Gosh. At age 36, my mother passed. Well, my father passed when I was 24 in 2000. Oh, no. My mother passed in 2011 when I was 36. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. When she left, you know, I used to goof off a lot, like you said, job to job. And I was like, you know, it's time to grow up. And, you know, she always just wanted me to work, stay out of trouble. And for the last two years, I've been the owner operator. And this past October, I finally got my own authority. So January 4th would be 90 days, and so more doors are open. Hey. But she just wanted me to work, stay out of trouble, and you know, I said by me, she'd be able to rest. That's what I do. And God's great. been looking out, and it's, it's great. been major. Now tell, now tell us about the necklace that you've got on your neck. That looks like it could be your mom right there on your neck. Yes, the necklace I have, it's, uh, her name was Savannah Floyd. My name's Mark Floyd. So the company I have is Banner Transport LLC. So I named it after her. And everything I do with the trucking is dedicated to my mother. That's sweet. So what about you? 
If you're a truck driver, do you feel recognized and, and celebrated? Whether you do or not, truckers are heroes, flat out. But the most important place we need to be a hero is at home, in our relationship first and foremost, and then with our kids. There's a lot of pressure to make more money, to climb, to do better, and we talk about those things on this channel, but your kids, your kids don't really care about that. They want you. My dad was successful in his career, but he played with my brother and me in a pool in our front yard that he inflated after he came home from work. He spent time with us. He took us camping and hunting, and he loved our mom, and it showed. It's something to think about. Work is important, no doubt. We want to model hard work and dedication. We want to manage our household well. We want to be strong in all the right ways and tender and loving in all the right ways, but let's also be there, physically present, emotionally engaged with our spouse and our kids as much as we can as truck drivers. That's what's gonna impact their lives the most. Back on your family real quick before I let you go. Yeah. Kind of what's your hope or your wish for your kids as they grow up? Pretty much for my kids to be more successful than me. Okay. Have an easier life, I guess, say, because okay. the death of my father yeah. and how my family is, that's a whole different subject that we don't have time for. All right. <laughs> um, yeah. I was never taught how to grieve about it. Really? Or show emotion about it, because yeah. I kind of got punished, in a sense, for showing emotion towards about my father dying. Oh. So I was always had to- Stuff it. Stuff it in, oh. hold it onto it, and just don't ever talk about it. Act as if he never existed. Oh, I'm sorry, man. Well, I'm trying to get them to actually express it so this way they don't end up like me. I see. Holding everything in. Yeah, yeah. You gotta let things out some, huh? I mean, you can't be yeah. out of control. But I mean, yeah. When a loved one passes away, that is major. What's an ideal weekend for you? Well, I DJ on the sides. If, if I don't have something booked up, okay. I usually get to relax and, you know, kick back. But if not, I'm usually uh, DJing just like a couple of weeks ago. You know, we get Toys for Tots. We did a big kids, you know, giving for Christmas, nice. Thanksgiving and stuff. Oh, that's yeah. great. What do you do uh, for fun when you're not driving? Uh, I go home. I grab a Nerf gun, load up with darts, and shoot my kids. Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. <laughs> you guys build forts to go in the backyard, or what's it, what's it like? Yeah, they'll take cushions inside the house See? and everything, build forts and everything, and then I come in and <laughs> smash them down and shoot them. I love it, I love it. And then we all get yelled at by mommy for making a house the mess. Well, there you go, you gotta clean it all up to make everything all right. That yeah. sounds great. So how about, like you said, you said hip hop and rap, and I think you said R&B. Yes. I like um, Al Jarreau. Yeah. So Al Jarreau would be more like dinner time right. music, like, yeah. and we never want to lose it, de -de -de, right? All right, That's all right. all right, all right, that's good. Yeah, I, like I, mixed, I mixed one of his songs last night. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Al Jarreau, <laughs> woo! And then what do you listen to uh, while you're driving? Heavy metal. Is that right? Wow, do you play an instrument yourself at all, or do you yeah. sing along, I'm sure, but? I used to play drums. Oh, wow. What, back when I was in high school. Why'd you stop? Army and I can't afford one. <laughs> yeah. I forgot to ask you how many nights a week you're gone away from home. But yeah, I usually stay out like three and a half, four weeks. But this time I stayed out uh, six weeks, seven weeks. Wow. So you're using a lot of video chat with the, the folks back home. A lot of yeah. FaceTime and yeah. Uh, the old account I used to be on was the week on, week off. So I'd be out for a full week and then I'd be, and then I would have home time for a full week. I see. So I worked every other week. Did the week on, week off, I was working great. Then the economy kind of plummeted. Yeah. So I'm back out here. Wow. But man, right. I want to make sure that guys like you get a chance to tell their story because I you guys got heart, man. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, and no, I appreciate Mark, it. Mark, I appreciate you. it a lot. Thank you. Thank you. And to your wife, Lucretia, as well. See if we can bring her over. Come on. How'd you guys meet? What's the what's the love story? When we met, we was out, and I seen her, and I told her, I said, you're going to be my wife. Oh. And that's how it went. That's she didn't know wow. that time, but I, I knew. You said that to her, or you said that to yourself? No, I said it to her. You said it to her, you're mm -hmm. going to be my wife. That's right. Wow. Mm -hmm. And she said, ooh. And that's it. <laughs> What'd she say? She said, you must be crazy. And I said, and I said, 
You, you see the ring? Oh my! <laughs> Zoom in on that. Wow. The ring up there. Yeah, hold it up. Hold oh, it up a little thank bit. You. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Well, thank you both for coming on. Appreciate meeting you. It's nice, nice to know you. Nice meeting and you. And I'll keep in touch with you guys. Well, Caleb, thanks again. Thank you for coming on and sharing some time with us. Guys like you, we are pulling for you because you're young. You got a family. You're out there driving. You're away from home for weeks at a time. We want to see you do well. We want to see your kids grow up strong, watching mom and dad working it out, man. Good for you. And thank you very much for that right there, the Army. Thank you. Mm. I fully embrace my role as the number one cheerleader for truckers and the trucking industry. I want truckers to succeed in their careers, to have marriages that are, are solid and fulfilling, to have the admiration of their kids the way Mark does and the way... Caleb will have one day. We're not just talking about truckers and trucking on this channel. We're talking about real life, deeper things, things that really matter. I learned something from every interview. Hope you guys do too as well. Thanks to Caleb and uh, to Mark, to all of you for watching. And don't forget to check out our other full length videos, our YouTube shorts, and our more frequent content over on Instagram and Facebook. I'm Rob Biaggi for Actual Truckers. And as you can see, it's home time for this trucker. Plus, it's my wedding anniversary. See ya. Peace and love and scream metal. What was it, <laughs> what was it called? Heavy metal screamo. screamo.